it. You can't fake creativity and you can't, um, in, and in a way sort of, you know, you can't pretend to be creative. You either are doing it or you're not. And the, the and, and as an artist, as a creator yourself, you know when that's not working. Right. Because you've only got yourself to, 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 to sort of judge on it. You know, if, if you can't fake something to yourself right. because you know you're faking it. <laughs> so it's, right. you know, in a way, you know, that's why I think where creativity gets difficult to maintain because the conditions that are created around us all the time, even the values that we live by within the society and the cultures we live in mm -hmm. are often there to sort of devalue creativity. You know, yeah. we even, you know, in, in the UK, I don't know what it's like in America, but we talk about core subjects in the UK in school. Okay. And those core subjects, which are seen as the most important, do not include creativity. And it's, you know, all the creative subjects are not in the core subjects. So are they, always, would that be like STEM subjects, like yes. the sciences and maths and, and those yeah. kinds of things? Okay. Exactly. I mean, the irony of it is if you speak to any sort of high level scientist or mathematician, they would say that science and maths at that level is creative. For sure. And I think any subject, and this is the irony, I think that actually... I think strip take putting creativity purely within the art sector. It's a way of sort of controlling it and sort of saying, okay, put it in the art sector and then don't fund the arts and then demean and devalue artists by making them infantilizing them into egotists and narcissists mm -hmm. rather than thoughtful, emotionally sensitive, uh, disciplined, creative people. 